will be the example where you have to compress many logs into one log. For log base, nothing. So we figured what it means. X minus three log y minus three log y plus eight log z minus three. Rewrite it as a single logarithm. As a single logarithm. If there is no base of the log, what do we know about that? It's 10, thank you. So remember, naked log is actually log with a base 10. It's very popular, so we just stopped writing it. I have to say mathematicians are very practical but lazy people. If there's something happening again and again and again, we tend to give it a name and stop typing it. It's very hard to type math. Try your own uh, experience. We used to hire people just to type math articles. So not having one more little thing over there helped a lot. And it's too popular not to admit that it should have its own name. This four in front of the log is multiplied. Can you guess what I'm going to do with it? Raise it to the power. Raise it to the power of x, exactly. Make sure you understand the difference. Make sure you understand the difference. I'll write down at the bottom. Note, log x to the four is not the same as log x parentheses to the four. Make sure you know the difference between input and output. When four is on top of x, input of the logarithmic function is raised to the four. So it's x times x times x times x. But if it's outside, the output is raised to the um, fourth power log times log times log times log. So the formula only works with the input being raised to the power, not with the output. Log to the four, it's just log to the four. We don't know what to do with that. But the first example has this property. The first example has it because input was raised to the four and log works with inputs like that. The second example doesn't have any formula. So the second example will stay as it is. So that's what I'm going to do here. I will take four and put it as a hat on top of the X because X is my input. Log X to the four minus. Same thing with this three. Three is multiplied by the log. I'll put it on top of the Y as a hat and it's like this, parentheses. So it's my input. Log parentheses Y is raised to the third power. Same with eight plus eight raised log z to the eight. And I don't know what to do with three, so I'll keep it as that. Is it uh, three? Oh, <laughs> there was something more over here. Let's see. No, oh, just three. Okay, just keep it as like that. Minus three. So we did this. We worked with powers. Now we remember every time you see log minus log, I can compress it into one log. It will be log of what? Sum gives you product, difference gives you a quotient, right? So you write down the fraction. Whoever was positive or the one who goes first, that's the positive one, goes to the top, the input. Whoever was negative input goes to the bottom. So log undoes quotient and gives you difference. But if you want to bring it back from the difference, you have to go back to the quotient. And it's inside, like so. What about the Can we multiply that? Yeah, we're going to do it right now. Either you do it right away or you do it in steps. But when you add log, you multiply by the input inside of the input so it's going to be inside of the input but let's do it step by step log z to the 8 minus 3 equals since i have log plus log that will be just one log and inputs will be multiplied z to the 8 with that blue input over here 
So it's going to be x to the 4 over y cubed multiplied by the input of the second log, because log plus log, that's what it gives you. Minus that, 3. Yes, well, it's not really simplified, but it's rewriting it. But that's true, yes. Fair. Sorry. And then, oh, that's three number, I see. It's actually pretty interesting. Uh, sketchy idea what to do with three that would be the answer but i was bothered what is three is about three actually can be rewritten as log who knows how to do that that's a tricky question i would say it's very creative how to rewrite three as log who knows any number actually can be written as log anything you want how log base three three that will be one but you're very close to the correct answer very close. Three before. Three what? Before. Three before. Oh, that's a very creative idea. Three times log base three of three. So you can also raise it like so, I guess. That's a very creative idea. In general, you're right. Log with the same base as the input gives you one, and then you put the exponent on top. Done. So I can see in this solution it's log base 10 since we need base 10. But uh, actually, I will keep both. So let's see. Any number can be written as 3 times log, I don't know, 5, 5, right? So like any actually base you want, uh, j, j. And then you put it as exponent over here. So you can put log base any random number, j, j raised to the 3. Done. So any number can be written with logs. Because log with the same base and does the exponential function with the same base. But we need base 10 because we want to compress everything in the same um, shape. So I need base 10 and I will write base 10. Log base 10 of 10 is 1. That's just for you to know. Remember, it's 1. And that's why we did not really do anything extra. We just multiplied 3 by 1 and 1 was written as the log. Wait. Oh, wait. Did you get it? Yeah, so that's what we're doing now. We're going to put this log into this exponent, and now I have log minus log, and the answer follows. One huge fat log. There's a fraction. X to the 4 was at the top. Z to the 8 was at the top y cube was at the bottom and then there was minus log 10 10 to the 3 so that's going to be 10 to the 3 which is coming from here log base 10 10 to the 3 that's what i just did and that is the last step So we converted many, many, many logs with the same base to one log. You can only do it when they have the same base, though. Well, you can always make them have the same base. We, oh, that's a good uh, answer. There is a change of base formula. So you can always play with the base, change of base formula and make it be the same base. That's what people do. It's actually pretty interesting. So, for example, that's since you mentioned it. <laughs> Since you mentioned it, example with change the base, change the base uh, formula. When I give you a logarithm from base 3 of 5 and say calculate what it is, you grab your calculator and you see only 2 there. Well, it will be ridiculous if they put all possible numbers in the calculator. But you see only two versions in your calculator, log base 10 and ln. So you will tell me, I don't, I don't know how to calculate this. What should I do? This is what you should do. And this is what Wolfram Alpha does. This is what computers do when you ask them to do that. They also convert it into the base they know, which is usually ln or log, whatever you like. One of these two. And then whoever, whatever number was on the top goes to the numerator. Whoever number was at the bottom in the base goes to the base. Each now can be calculated using the calculator. You put a quotient and it gives you 1.46 using your calculator. Nice. So that's 
So that's the idea. So don't be afraid of that. <laughs> Finally, let's do one more important topic, which you definitely need to know is how to solve equations. All of this is about equations. Find x, you know, it's like typical questions. So solving exponential and or logarithmic equations. Equa okay, I just usually you do EQS, equations. I have very nice steps for that. And then my students usually learn it well because I just give good steps. For example, it's not very hard if it's written only like so. So the simple examples are actually the one that explains it really well. 5 to the x equals 2 to 0. That's the thing, like lots of processes in biology and nature have, or medicine, have exponential growth. 5 raised to something gave you 2 to 0. So you show up to the lab and the result is 2 to 0. You know this is the result of exponential function. 5 was raised to the time t, in this case x. So how many time did it take to get into 2 to 0? This is an inverse problem. You want to solve for x. How would you do it? You will start guessing. 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed, 125, and so on. That's too long. That is why logarithmic function was created to undo uh, the exponential function. So you apply both sides. For example, ln. Usually ln is the basic one. So step one. Step one, actually, I would say isolate. Isolate, and sometimes you have to collect and collect. Exp or log on one side. Well, you don't have to write on one side. Isolating literally means it's a redundant phrase. Isolating means make sure it's standing on one side. In this case, 5 to the x is already standing on one side, so I don't have to do anything. Step 2, apply or use the inverse function. In this case, we're going to do ln. If it's a logarithm in front of you, then use e to the x. Boom, done. So I will do or, or else you will think it's a fraction. Or e to the x. And then you will use properties or formulas use. Properties. To simplify. To simplify and solve for x. So in using inverse functions, which is the step two, allows us to solve for unknown. In this case, we have, in this case, we have e, no, we have five to the x equals two to zero. I isolated it, it's standing on the left hand side, nothing is attached to it, no numbers and so on. I'm ready to apply, I'm ready to apply exponential function to both, logarithmic function to both sides. Ln, Ln, that's like a very messy way to write it down, but it's exactly how everyone's seeing it. Ln will take this x and put it down. You don't even have to do log base 5. You could if you want to, it's fine. You can do log base 5, it will undo 5. But to be honest, it's extra. Because Ln properties will take and put this x down. And that's the whole point. We do not like that x was the exponent. It's too hard to retrieve it from there. We do know how to solve equations when x is multiplied by stuff. So we have x times ln of 5, which is some kind of number, equals ln of 2 to 0, like so, which is also some kind of number. Divide by whatever is attached to x, which is ln 5. And it's going to be ln 2 to 0 over ln 5. Do we have a formula to simplify quotient of two logs? No. 
Remember the difference. <laughs> remember, remember the difference. Log minus log gives you the quotient. But we don't have any formula when it comes to outputs of logs. Log over log, log times log, we have no idea what is that. So you take your calculator and you calculate and it gives you 3.85. So, uh, how much? 3.5? Oh, yeah, you're right, thank you. 3.35. So apparently, if 5 is raised to something close to 3.35, 3, 3 it gives you 220. Pretty interesting. And this is how you work with uh, equations that start with exponential. You can guess the same idea is happening with logarithmic one. So let me do a small one and we can do the quiz. Quiz today has very good extra credit, so you will like it. Everyone will do extra credit this time, you will see. Example two. What if we're starting with logarithm? So log arithm function, what is that? 3 y minus 0 0.5 equals to 0. Use the same steps. Isolate the thing first, the thing that involves the variable you're looking for. So they ask us to find y. And soon we're going to learn how to differentiate all of this, so that will be super fun. Differentiating exponential logarithmic functions is fun. I have a couple of old Russian jokes about this. So, idea first. You see this thing? It's hard to dig out y from inside of the logarithm, just as hard as to dig out x from inside of the exponential function. First, before applying exponential function onto log to get rid of log, let's isolate it. Step one, isolate. This is the best suggestion you can have because this is when you don't make mistakes if you isolate. Isolate whatever you're looking for. X equals blah, blah, blah. Log equals blah, blah, blah. Step two, you don't like log? Get rid of it. There's one nice way to get rid of log. Apply exponential function. To get rid of this log, apply exponential function that will actually get rid, get rid of the log base 3. So what exponential function should we use? Cubed. What? Cubed, right? Yes, cubed. I thought you said 2. <laughs> I'm like, why? No, why 2? <laughs> it's like such a random number. 3 raised to oh, both oh, sides. Yeah, it is close. I was like, why 2? <laughs> log 3. So 3 raised to log base 3y equals 3 raised to 0 0.5. By the way, uh, there's a whole theorem states why it's legal to do that, and it's about continuous functions. Because, okay. wait just a second, because logarithm and exponential functions are continuous, we can raise both things into the same thing. Yeah? Can we just raise both to the third, to the third? That's what we did. We put no, 3 we raised, as the base. We raised 3 to the log. So yeah. That's not the same thing as just cubing the result. Yeah, we're not cubing the result. If you cube the result, that will make it o o only worse, to be honest. Oh, yes, we don't want to do that. Works if if output... Do. Exactly. Yeah, very good point. So now this undoes each other. We have a property a raised to the log base a of x or whatever is inside that is how inverse functions undo each other. Those are inverse functions undoing each other. So since it was y inside, y will stay. And y now is 3 raised to the 0 0.5, which is amazing exact answer. Which you can also write down as 3 with some kind of root. What kind? Square. Square. Let me know if you don't know why. 0 0.5 is 1 half. One half is a square root. That's the exact answer. So we're using the properties of inverse functions, which I wrote before. A raised to the log A x gives you x. And which one was the other one? Log base A. A to the x also will give you x. So they undo each other. Yes? Do you learn it in high school just like a simpler way. Do I have to all these No, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Schools teach different. There are pretty creative ways to get rid of all of this. So if you're right, if your work is correct, I'm fine with that. Very good. Uh, this is a classical one. I have to say, this is how we teach around the world. So it's nice if you know the classical way. 
But yeah, if your teacher taught you some kind of other shortcuts, I'm always up to that. I see some cool shortcuts sometimes from American schools, and they're like, I don't know this, but this looks really good. And I check if it's correct, and it's good. What do you think about this? We're going to do more complicated equations at some point. But at this point, do you have a feeling at least what is log 2 to 6, base 2 of 16? Who can at least tell me that? 4. 4? How do you know? And now please explain. Because 16 is 2 raised to the power of 4. Because 16 is 2 raised to the power of 4. Log answers the question. 2, so it's a question mark. 2 to what power gives you 16? That is 4. So at least have some kind of meaning behind this. And that is good. Now you know new function. Or maybe you learned it in school, but it's nice to review that kind of stuff. More questions about this, logarithmic equations. We're going to do stuff soon. And then we're going to differentiate all of this. It will be super fun. Derivatives, actually, the most interesting part of all of this.